Dr. Grosset and Dr. Jacobs, thank you both for doing this interview. What I wanted to ask you first is how you both met. Jacques, do you remember this? No, yeah, oh, of course I remember. <laughs> but perhaps it's but, better but, for I'll, I'll, I'll tell my version and you yeah, tell yeah, 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 tell your version. Yeah. I, as a graduate student, had the amazing opportunity to work with jo the Roy Curtis and Josie Clark Curtis who worked with Charles Shepard, who would grow Mycobacterium leprae in nine-banded armadillo. And this was the advent of recombinant DNA technology. And, you know, actually when there was a moratorium of doing recombinant DNA experiments for a while, Charles Shepard, who had worked on leprosy, wanted somebody to go ahead and make genome, put the genes of leprosy bacillus into, TB, into E. coli. And this is exactly what everybody was afraid of. But Roy Curtis was unafraid, and I got to do that for my PhD. I got to make the first genomic libraries. And I remember I went to a leprosy meeting at the old leprosy hospital. They used to be called leper colonies, but there was one outside of New Orleans in Carville, Louisiana. And you know, I, I was presenting as a graduate student in front of the leprosy community. Now back then, it wasn't that you went to a meeting on the immunology of leprosy or the molecular biology of leprosy. All 25 people in the world that worked on leprosy showed up at the meeting. And I went up and I was very nervous because I was a young graduate student. And what I meant to say was, since nothing was known about the genetics of Mycobacterium leprae, we decided to make genomic libraries. But in my nervousness when, I, nervousness when I stood up, I said, since nothing was known about leprosy, we decided to do genetics. Basically insulting the entire clap. And Jacques stood up in the back and clapped while everybody else was boom. <laughs> So what, what do you remember? Yeah, exactly that. Exactly, absolutely exactly that. But there were more than 20 people. There were at least, at least 100. And they were, boo! <laughs> they, were, they were thinking, what is this, <laughs> this imbecile? And me, I was, ah, I said, at least someone. <laughs> but what, what I remember so well and how he really became a mentor to me was not only had he clapped during that uh, presentation, but every night at the hotel, yeah. he would we would go down to the bar and we'd get this big pad and he just wanted me to explain to him recombinant DNA technology and how to clone genes. Yeah. And we did that the rest of the meeting yeah. and with great fun. So what do you think is one of the most important things that you've learned from Dr. Grosset? I was a math major and I had taken this microbiology course and I wanted to be a bacterial geneticist. And many places as a math major applying to get into a microbiology program, I wasn't even invited to, they didn't even respond to my letter. But I went down and I met a gentleman, my mentor, Roy Curtis III, and I told him that day I met him, I said, Roy, I don't know much biology. And, and uh, you know, I'm a math major. And he said to me, Bill, there is no sin in being ignorant. The sin is to remain ignorant. And you know what? That is shared by Jacques, uh, unequivocally. <laughs> that, you know, th this sort of acceptance and, and you know, that sort of, um, and Jacques is always encouraged at any meeting I've ever been at or with any student I've ever seen him with, encourage them to go ahead and ask questions. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is an eternal lesson that will always stay with me. I've heard both of you mention your mentors, and it seems as though this is a very important part of your lives and how your career has evolved. Can you talk more about your protégés, the, the people in your lab? How do you help them? It's more, at least for me, it's more do what you want, be interested. What I like in Bill is he is not doing the same th things that I am doing. And I am gaining a lot of, from him 
you know, I mean, uh, I may be the mentor, but he is, in a way, a mentor for me because uh, the great majority of what I have understood on the genetic and so on come from him. It, it, it's, it's like so true. I, I have, um, I was just thinking in a lot of ways, like our protégés are our children. You know, one thing I've always said to my children, it, it doesn't matter if you like science or not, and neither one of them are scientists, but um, you, you find something you love and do it. And in fact, I tell everybody who walks in my office, you know, if this isn't what excites you, yeah, exactly. you know, go find something that does. And I think, you know, the enthusiasm, and you know, he still has the enthusiasm, and I do, and you know, the day, that I can't think of a new experiment to do, it's time to step out. I think it, our role is to, 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 to push the guy who wants to be pushed, who, who, who are ready to be pushed. Everybody's different, yeah. and, and they, but I think acceptance and, and encouragement and, and giving them freedom. 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 Freedom, yeah. you know. It's freedom so, and responsibility. Yes. <laughs> You know, we don't dictate yeah. what they do. No, no. We, we'll critique it, we'll look at it, we'll challenge them, but we, we give them freedom, yeah. yeah. What do you think is something that a mentor should not do? Oh, be, 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 be a, a very domineering and, and a, a controlling. Yeah, I think that's the kiss of death. I think it's what, what takes people away from science is they, they're discouraged and they're disheartened. And Plenty of mentors are not mentors. Yeah. They are making their career and they try to use other people as much as they can. Can you say that louder? It's okay. <laughs> no, I say plenty of so-called mentors are not mentors. They are, they are chiefs. They are making their career on, and they are ready to use their collaborators for their interest and not for the interest of the collaborators. Right. That is rare, you know. But in those rare cases, what, what kind of advice would you give to the young researchers who are finding get themselves... It, get, get out of this situation. Yeah. Yeah, fine, as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Fly away. Yeah. You know, Jacques, Jacques can be as critical about somebody's experiment or hypothesis as anybody. But it, it's not that. It, we, we, that's part of our job. But at the same time, we let people go and try stuff and give them the opportunity to do that. He has a good nature for that. And I think I have a good nature for that. Yeah, so so we, we, we do have this passion to achieve success as well. He definitely wants to see TB eradicated with drugs, and he yeah. he thinks about this all the time. And I, I, I share that, and I see a lot of value in that. And at the same time, you know, I think about immunology, but I think about all sorts of things. That's yeah. so does he. Yeah. Of course, I, uh, me, I love immunology in the sense if someone is able to find the vaccine against TB, yes. I would be the first to write to the Nobel Prize uh, people yes. <laughs> that, that guy should have it. Yeah. Dr. Grosset, how many years has your research been focused on the fight against TB? I work against TB 100% since January 1st, 1953. And do you think you've dealt TB enough blows to make you feel satisfied? That I have a very good response to that. I am totally unsatisfied. <laughs> Among the nine million new cases of TB every year in the world that have the potential to be 100% cured, uh, uh, almost three million are failures. As a human being, we have win in the, in the US, in North America, in Western Europe, we have win. We have win the TB. Yeah. But, uh, but we live in the world. You probably still, it, I, I see my shortcomings as well and what we've done, but I think we, we have this eternal hope 
Yeah. This eternal yeah. hope oh, yeah. that what we're doing will contribute to yes. making a difference. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And the people we trained, uh, our mentees, yes, I, are going to have an impact. Yes. So. At least me, I try to do my best. And it's still fun. <laughs> yes, it's still it fun. Still fun. Yeah. Why is your relationship so strong? Because I'm pleased in his company. That's all. Well, That's we, all. We, we, we're kindred spirit. And you know, I, I run a meeting every few years called TB Past, Present, and Future. Jacques will be there, and, and uh, Roy Curtis the third of my, my previous mentor, Patrick Brennan, Barry Bloom, another mentor that I had here. We, we, we all have these common shared passions. And, and you know, I think that uh, respect and hope, and it's a friendship and a kindred spirit that we share. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you.